Um, <laughs> hello, my name is Guy Unsworth. Uh, I'm a theatre director and I was at Merchants in 1998 to 2005. Great. And do you mind just telling us a little bit about how you got from Merchants to where you are now? Yeah, I, um, I went to Nottingham University straight after school um, and I went to do financial accounting and management uh, and in the middle of my first year I decided that wasn't for me um, but whilst I was able to sort of continue I stayed in the same I stayed in the business school and I changed to industrial economics which I was able to do because I you know wasn't that far in um, and so yes I graduated with industrial economics having spent a lot of my time at university doing theatre on the side um, and so uh, yeah to, to go into the theatre was a quite to me was quite a logical decision um, even though I think to some people on the outside they think how do you go from industrial economics to theatre um, but I then went down to London I spent a year doing a postgraduate uh, degree in in theatre directing at one of the drama schools um, and and then I've been working sort of freelance since then uh, partly myself directing my sort of early on in the, in the early days directing smaller scale shows um, but I was also doing a lot of assisting um, and assistant and associate work for bigger directors in bigger venues and and really learning the ropes that way um, and yeah, and that sort of brings me to, 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 to where I am today. And I do a little bit of writing as well, which is something that has sort of only, I've only started doing in the last few years, basically. Okay, fantastic. And what do you think, uh, what are the key qualities of a good director? What do you think makes a good director? Um, I think, I think the, the uh, your job is there to, you you are there ultimately as a sort of artistic leader um, you're there to manage and lead the artistic process but in order to do that i think you're having to work with a lot of people who are experts in their own fields and the key is to maximize their input and to make the most of them and for them to be at their best work um, and to use those skills to create something that is is as a whole um, as effective as possible, and so I think a lot of the difficulty of the, the sort of the job is managing this difference between sort of leading a group of people, and and also being able to to be quite clever with that and sort of take a back back seat um, in order to sort of to for them I think to to feel that they've got the freedom to do to be their own leaders as well and to make the most of their own skills um, so I sort of think of it a little bit like being a little bit like invisible leadership um, and I think that's the sort of key to it is if you can lead by <laughs> not really being noticed um, I think that's the best way to do it. Did you always know so when you were back at uni and, and um, you know involved in productions did you, did you always have in mind that you wanted to go into directing or were you sort of unsure? No I, I had spent a lot of my childhood um, doing drama um, doing I, I did a lot of theatre at my local uh, theatre in Southport the Southport Dramatic Club I did a little bit of theatre at school um, but I'd always had that interest and I think when I was sort of 16, 17, I knew I loved the acting side of things, but I didn't want to go into the acting side of things as a career. Um, whereas, so when I went to university, I think my, my sort of, <laughs> the movement was me deciding that I wanted to go into the business side of theatre, I would go and be a producer or something like that. Um, but the reality of that was that I felt that ultimately what I really loved was the creative side. So when I, when I tried directing in my second year at university, that's the first time I'd ever done it. Um, it was a real sort of risk. I didn't know whether I would enjoy it or not. And I absolutely loved it. I just loved working with so many different people who had these different skills and, mm -hmm. and being able to collaborate them. It felt to me much more fulfilling because I could, you know, explore all these different departments yeah yeah wow and you mentioned doing some drama at schools are there any particular productions that stand out in your mind or you know particular memories 
uh, I did West Side Story, um, which was I uh, yes because I because I was very busy doing theatre outside school. Most of the time when I was at school, I was doing a lot of music and I played in a lot of the bands, um, and certainly skills that I use quite a lot nowadays, even in my career as a director. Um, but West Side Story was the sort of was the main show I did, um, and I remember winning the 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 award for the, the the drama award which was presented by someone called Mella uh, and so I was I remember a speech day being uh, announced as the winner of the Mella drama award <laughs> <laughs> I was only looking at all the the big boards with all the West Side Story photos on the other day they were um, they're in the archives now <laughs> I think they, they, they cut all the they had to cut all the dance breaks because I couldn't dance, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, are any sort of particular, I mean, I think, yeah, I know you're still in touch with Dr. Gill, any particular sort of staff or, or, or friends, I suppose, from school that, that were an influence or that kind of helped you along the way? Yeah. Um... I mean, again, I, I think I definitely remember Mr. Holroyd and that sort of, and, and um, Mr. Williams who played in in the bands with us, and that was, I think, uh, they they were my kind of c closer um, sort of staff members, and Doc Gill actually more so, I think, in recent years, because um, you know I don't think it was again I left to go and do industrial economics, so it didn't. It wasn't like I left to go and um, go in that in that sort of direction. I mean, I think the interesting thing with um, Doc Gill it was that he taught me English. So my um, so one of one of my set texts was of, of Mice and Men, and I then directed of Mice and Men um, in 2018. So that was a real sort of strange kind of coming and full, coming full circle, really. Mm. Um, and it sort of yeah really made me sort of remember that that side of things and uh, and I think because again you know English was not my forte uh, English as a subject was really not my forte by the time I went to a uh, when I was doing A levels I wasn't doing any of the the subjects that most theatre directors would do you know the the ones that I work with they they tend to have done English or history or um, politics and and um, and the humanities, and I, and I, I wasn't. I was doing maths, sci uh, maths, computer science, um, economics. You know, I was very. <laughs> I think I am quite a different brain, really. But um, so, so I've sort of digressed onto that front. But yes, it was. It is, yes, it's interesting. Sort of, you only kind of get to your your late twenties and then realise actually <laughs> a lot of that stuff that I didn't think was useful was really useful. Actually, really helpful. But no, interesting to to take quite a different path or to come from a different route and that's something that's useful for, for pupils to hear today that, that that perhaps your your subject choice doesn't isn't necessarily a barrier to what you may go on to do you know, we Not do hear that quite often from people study what you what you're passionate about um and then you 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 know you may well still be able to, to, to turn that to a different career entirely so yeah i think that the other thing that i find is interesting is that uh, there are a lot of directors in the industry and you have to somehow be different to them and and that's a lot to do with your passions it's a lot to do with your background and what you have you know what you've picked up along the way um and i think there is value in the fact that i i i know and i understand a budget because of my economics degree i understand a conversation that i need to have with my employers who are producers and they need to make money yeah. um and so it does shift the way that you are, um, but I didn't, so I wouldn't change it at all, despite the fact that I didn't, you know, it, it, it feels like it was very unhelpful to being in, in being a theatre director, but actually I think it, it shapes you. So I would, yes, I would definitely be a fan of saying, go, just go and do the subjects that you want to do and you're interested in. Yeah. In terms of career choices, you, you, can, you can change at any point, I think. You can make it work. Uh, it's probably a question just more for me that occurs to me as you as you talk. How how do you go about getting a directing job? Is it all about the networking, or do you have to kind of pitch for it? Is it are they openly advertised? Or yeah, um, I would say nine 
95 percent of the time it's word of mouth mm -hmm. uh, which is difficult because how do you get the work if you're not working if that makes sense so yes. and that was yeah you have to it's a combination of word of mouth and i think a lot to do with the repeat customers yeah. you know I'd, um it's you know it's important to to make sure you solidify your employers really because they they will come back to you um and if they can come back to you then you don't need to keep trying for new work basically um uh, i think the other thing is that i i think making work myself is an important part of it so um going back to that thing of that there are lots and lots of directors in the industry you have to be thinking ahead rather than waiting for the job to come your way because you know if if the producer joe bloggs wants to do a i don't know a musical about a i don't know a boys school in crosby he's going to go to that you know the, the his obvious first choice director um and it may well be that you just haven't had a chance to work with them yet so um what i would be doing and what i'd be sort of saying to other directors is you need, you need to have found the way to create that musical before the producer thinks of, a, of an idea to do it so mm. um yeah sort of trying to think ahead and creating products yourself is i think is a is is the way to go about it if you can yeah that makes sense what would you say has been your most challenging project or Kind of period of time in your career has it been <laughs> recent times or <laughs> <laughs> um yes there's i think there are a lot of sh you know loads of shows that i have learned big lessons on um and i would say you learn more you learn a lot more when the the going's tough i guess um when it's when you're struggling with things i, I mean I, i've done shows where i've just found them really difficult to rehearse like just couldn't in my head get my head around them um get, having sort of sleepless nights because i can't figure out how they're quite working but because of that struggle and because of that sort of grappling with them they actually end up potentially being stronger mm -hmm. um because they're more meaningful once you actually get there um i think the i would say the sort of the real challenges are are the sh it's a very volatile industry um as we know right now <laughs> as a perfect example that it's it's not risk free by any stretch of the imagination so it's um you know keep having the sort of tenacity and um the 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 endurance i think is half of the battle um i've had shows that that have taken two three four years to come to actually come to fruition um and i had a couple of shows this year that have been you know they've they've been sort of in the diary for two years and they're pushed back again and one of them's being pushed back over 18 months so that will be by the time that that actually opens that'll be nearly four years and Gosh. so so things like that, that that's i think is that often the challenge is is just trying to stick with it and trust that in the long run it will <laughs> it'll be all right on the night it will so. come <laughs> <laughs> um, and as a, a director when you're auditioning actors and, and 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 colleagues what what would be your top tips for anyone that's kind of auditioning for something or you know um for actors, um, I think the biggest tip I would ever give anybody is that the people in the room want you to be at your best. It's not in anybody's interest for you not to perform well because they're wasting their time, you're wasting your time. So it's a useful thing, I think, for any actor going into an audition to have the attitude that they want me to be really great. <laughs> um, not to put yourself under pressure, but sometimes you go into auditions and people seem a bit grumpy and that's either because they've been having a bit of a long day in which case great you're gonna you know brighten it up for them um or also they haven't found what they're looking for and if they haven't found what they're looking for then even better because now's your chance and i think once you sort of switch your once an actor switches their psychology into that kind of um attitude then it's uh it also just makes it much more enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. 
it must be quite hard sitting on the other side you know people always talk about how hard it is to go and do auditions i can imagine it's not very easy to sit through long days of <laughs> lots of different people coming and yeah they can be very long days and also you often don't have very much time that's and that's the hardest thing because auditioning is expensive you know particularly yeah. on a big professional show where you've got to get the various members of the team to sit on a panel it's um it's an expensive process so as a result auditions get sort of crunched down and you end up with five minutes instead of 15 minutes with someone um and what's difficult is it's very difficult to sort of get to know people like i you know you, you get to know them from the the, the, res the the performance that they give you but what i really want to know is who they are as a person because mm. that's the person i've got to live, uh, not to live with to work with for the next you know five six weeks and you want you want good people good personalities and um yeah i mean i suppose that's that's tip number two is go in and be yourself don't try and be somebody else because actually your you as yourself and your own personality and your own demeanor is 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 a significant part of being you know of being cast in something because you are there as a worker it's just, yeah. just like any other job. yeah and it's a large set of people that have to gel and work together and hopefully enjoy the process <laughs> yeah that's part of it um, so lockdown obviously been a bit tricky. Um, how? <laughs> there's no simple question, is there? <laughs> how has it been? What have you been able to? I, I know that you've been working on a, a quite a different project, but um, what have you been able to do over the last few months? Um, gosh, uh, it feels like such a long time, doesn't it? <laughs> um, the, the initial lockdown feels like years ago. Um, yeah uh what have i been doing i've done a, a a sort of a whole host of different things i i spent lockdown with my mum which was great uh I, I lost my dad last year which was obviously um pretty terrible and just to spend some time with her was amazing and um and certainly the longest period of time i've been back since um so, well since since i was at school so to spend a few months with my mum was um great i'm not sure whether she would agree or not but you know, <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah i i managed to keep working for the next for the, for the first six weeks or so because the the future was so uncertain so i still had projects later in the year now and in january that were still planning to go ahead so i was able to sort of get on with those which was great and that kept me busy and then and then it all seemed to look pretty grim um and so i was then sort of faced with sort of two things one is that i was struggling to do anything creative um which is obviously a big you know big part of my my life and my well-being um and the other thing was that i also needed to generate some sort of income to pay my bills so i did two things one is that i um because I'm, I'm quite good on photoshop so i signed up to a freelance website as a graphic designer mm -hmm. so i worked on some projects i designed some uh, a, a box for some nhs masks uh, <laughs> and found myself doing some very very strange things that i never thought i would ever be doing um but it was um it kept me busy which was actually really important to me and um kept my mm. my brain moving and it kept me learning i think that was the other thing as i was accepting jobs that i which I, this is not something I would recommend, but accepting jobs that I thought I could do, but I didn't quite know whether I could do them or not. So I didn't spend a lot of time trying to find out, trying to sort of teach myself <laughs> these extra skills, which I, uh, so as a result, I was, I was learning. Um, and then the other thing I did was I, cr I crowdfunded a um, children's book which i i wrote with a um an actor friend who was an illustrator um it's called freddie and polo it's um it's really for two three and four year olds it's a little bedtime story um and freddie is actually my nephew and polo is my dog and they were separated during lockdown so it was really a a, a book about their adventures together and um and that was really great and again a massive learning experience we we managed to crowdfund it successfully. That was only half the battle um, because I then had to learn how to self-publish a book and all of that side of things. So um, that was that was definitely a process in itself. And we, but we just we're just about to finish the second book, which is great. Wow. We're going to release it. Yeah. So um, fantastic. But it's um, yeah, that was a real that was absolutely a creative outlet, and 
it was just great to be doing something and it felt like the message behind it which was kindness is contagious was a chance to give back to you know to the people around and and to find a little bit of you know lightness in a very dark time i guess yeah but I know a few people who have it and who, who love it. So, uh, yeah, good, we'll good. eagerly await a second. And uh, well, we potentially um, to, to get you talking to our Stanfield kids about yeah. it. You know, we, we, we perhaps could do something there. That would be great. Um, but no, it does. It looks brilliant. So, great. And have you seen any examples of you must have a lot of uh, friends and colleagues in the industry? As have you seen or heard of, of other people doing kind of clever creative things you know how are, how are people finding ways around disruptions yeah i mean it's been really interesting i think it's very difficult for some people um yeah, it's a financial hit to some people massively because i think also a lot of a lot of people in the industry have second jobs they have you know particularly actors who you know they, their schedules are often quite difficult to predict so you you might be in a job for nine months of the year you might even have another job lined up after it but the chances are you're probably going to have a gap of some sort so they tend to you know they go and work in a their their pts they go and do gym classes they run um they work in a bar or anything like that and of course all of those things shut down so it was it was really really difficult for a lot of people and you know as it was for me at, at certain times but um i was glad that i had various things in place that i could sort of sort of fall back on but um i've sort of i've lost the <laughs> lost my train of thought now um uh, what what was the question <laughs> just any particularly you know kind of interesting or creative approaches yeah. that have come out of yeah well there's been a brilliant organization set up called not on the west end.com <clears throat> and if anybody's looking to buy christmas presents that's where you should go because not on the west end.com is a website um and they've got an instagram page and it's set up purely for businesses from the th that have been set up as a res as, as a businesses that have been set up by theater individuals who have been out of work and the 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 the, the, the sheer sort of breadth of um skills on offer is absolutely amazing and it's um it's um it's really great to, oh i'm so sorry my, everything's going on um it's um yeah it's amazing what people have been doing and um everything from sort of new sweet sweetie companies to um people going out and decorating people's patios it's uh it's an amazing um it's an amazing display of what people can do in 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 a yeah. difficult circumstances so if, if anybody wants to buy, don't go and buy your christmas presents on amazon go and buy them on not on the west not on the west end com. that is a very good message and uh, yeah we we are actually looking at doing we're not doing something similar but doing we have an alumni business directory for for people who set up their own businesses and, and are planning a bit of a christmas push on that to try and get people to, to go to these independent businesses and just support real people wherever they can so um, yeah. i will definitely pick them up brilliant and is there just um if you could talk to yourself at school now is there anything you would say that's quite a tricky question advice that you would give to, to you know a 15 year old self oh gosh um <laughs> <laughs> or even just the I current would, kids i would say if anything if you're ever th if you're thinking about trying something try it um i think that's always been my biggest stumbling block i think along the way is that i occasionally don't feel like i should take the risk <clears throat> and all the best stuff that i've i've ever really done in my life has been because i've had the confidence to take a risk and just to give it a go because what's the worst that can that what's the worst that can happen you know it, whatever happens if it goes wrong you, you'll find a way out of it but if you don't you'll always wonder what could have been if you didn't give it a go so that would be my <laughs> i think that's what i would say to myself i would love to I would love to be a bigger risk taker. I think I'm a, a risk taker in a certain area, yeah. um, but I would love to take bigger risks. And I think that's something I would have sort of persuaded myself to do, um, you know, 
back then. And and I think the other thing is to is to I often talk about adding value. I think it's about making sure that you're always giving something, be that you know support and friendship to your mates or you know helping something uh, helping something become something else it's about sort of making sure that you're always giving something um and it doesn't have to be about adding value in a financial capacity when it comes to work it's about making sure that you're you're adding a service or a, a passion or anything like that because that's that's when you start to get things back and that's when you'll start to feel fulfilled i think in life yeah that was great. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Much appreciated and um, wise words. And it's obviously quite a tricky time for those at school at the moment as well. They, in school, out of school, um, not quite sure where the world is going to go. So it's yeah. Yeah, some real people who are out there and, you know, just, just advice on how to take it. Thank you very much.